Welcome back, everyone. So, if you have a 3D printer, you may be familiar with nozzle sizes. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or higher millimeter nozzles. This means the diameter of your nozzles will push out filament roughly the size of that nozzle hole. From there, we have layer height. This is the space in the z-axis of the layers laid upon one another. Smaller layers have a closer smush that theoretically give you higher quality. I suppose you could say higher resolution or at least a less perceptible layer line. There is a not often mentioned feature of the slicers and that is line width. If you look here, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle may have a line width of around 0.4 millimeters, 0.42, or even 0.45 as default. Larger nozzles follow a similar pattern. There are ways to have your nozzle push out more filament in a given area. So your 0.4 millimeter nozzle could push out 0.6 millimeters or even one millimeter rows of plastic. This has a few benefits. Thicker walls. This means you do not need to run multiple walls and models. Vase mode prints can benefit from this. In vase mode, once the bottom has been set, we'll print the rest of the model in a single wall with no top. More filament. More filament could translate into stronger parts. Heavier prints. With that additional plastic increase, you can make lighter prints more substantial. Faster print times. If you're running multiple walls, you can reduce the number of passes. Instead of two or three walls, you could run one. Now there are some potential issues. If your printer cannot keep up with the filament flow, there could be extrusion issues or other print errors. With the larger line width, you could also have quality issues. But with that said, let's go over this feature. Okay, so let's get into it. So starting with your line width, we have these two cubes. I'm going to do a quick slice so you get an idea of what it looks like. So standard cube, two walls, and of course we'll just have our standard 15% infill. You can make your adjustments to the line width in two sections. So you can do this under the global process, in which case it'll affect all of the parts that you have or we can go to objects process and we can select individual ones. So we'll actually keep this as the default and you can make the adjustments to your line width under the quality setting from here. Now there is a lower and upper limit to your line width with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So from here, you're getting about 0.2 or 0.22. So I'm going to do the extreme. I'm gonna knock this one all the way down on each of these areas. So from default, outer wall, inner wall, uh, top surface, etc. And we'll do a quick slice. So from here, you'll see the difference. So again, this is actually still a 15% um, infill on both of these. All right, so I'm gonna make a few of these and we're actually going to increase the line width, oops, sorry, the line width um, uh, on each of these sections and I'll make a few cubes and we'll see the differences. Okay, through the magic of editing, I actually made a few of these and I labeled them and we're going to use a modifier that will take uh, pretty much the top half and I'll show you what the differences are if we are looking at uh, 0.2 all the way through a one millimeter push out of plastic. All right, so we're going to do our preview. So from here, you can start to see the differences. So with our 0.2 millimeter line width, our standard or default 0 0.42, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one millimeter. Now, from here, we'll actually start to see, since these are thicker um, lines being laid down, technically they should be stronger. Unfortunately, I don't have a testing rig, uh, so 
more plastic, stronger part, so we're just going to lean into uh, that hypothesis. And this is what it would look like if it were a gyroid infill. So this little bird's nest going all the way up here. And I'll print this out so you can get a, a better understanding on how this looks. Okay, so we'll look at how the line width affects your infill. So this is the gyroid infill. The 0.22 almost seems useless. The 4.2 is what we're used to with the default. And as you go higher, uh, we essentially see thicker um, uh, extrusions. And this is the top view. And this is the grid infill. And again, this is still set to 15%. So everything you're seeing right here is a 15% infill and it increments up. You can actually change this number, anything in between each of these. Uh, I just did some uh, generic numbers. Now from here, uh, again, top down view, uh, as those extrusions get thicker, we essentially get sturdier parts. Now for the most part, your, your default settings should be fine, but just keep in mind that you can go higher. So let's look at how line width affects walls. So let's create a simple primitive cube. And I'll make everything 25 by 25 by 25. And for this, we're actually just going to get rid of all of the infill. So we're just looking at just the walls. So your typical wall setup is this. I'm going to create several different options and you'll see how they'll change depending on what your line width is set to. All right, so I made several different versions starting at a 0.22 all the way up uh, through a one millimeter and you can make any adjustments in between these as well. All right, so we're just going to slice this and I'll show you what it looks like. And when I print these, I'll actually break out the calipers. But starting at the 0.22, you'll see that each of these line widths will give us larger and larger extrusions as you get to the larger versions of it. And this is with two walls. But if you're looking at this, you can probably get away with a single wall that will match usually one of these in between. So if I were to compare this 0.42 millimeter with two walls to this 0.84 millimeter with one wall, we're fairly close in terms of print time and filament used. Now we're just looking at a single wall with their respective line width. And this is if you had kept it at a default with two walls. So the bottom row is the single wall and the top row is the dull wall. I took out the 0.22 millimeter since it seemed too thin to even include in this comparison. So for all practicality's sake, this is a comparison of a 0.42 millimeter. This is dual wall and a 0.84 millimeter as a single wall. Next, we'll see how this will affect our top surface. In this case, I put some text down and I'll make some clones of this uh, with varying characteristics. Okay, so these are the models. So we have our default, which is the 
0.42, uh, 0.6, 0 0.22, which is under the default, uh, the 0.8 and the 1. And when we slice this, we'll see that some of these will actually come out pretty cleanly, as long as there's no print errors, and the other ones will be a mess. So we'll print this out and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I added a new one to the mix. So looking at the 0.22, middle will be 0.30, then our default setting of 0.42. We start to essentially fall apart on quality at the 0.6. Then the center one is 0.8 and completely unrecognizable, which would be the one millimeter. Um, now looking at these, I actually think the the 0.22 looks fine, but there is some minor extrusion errors at the top. 0.3 and default setting looks good, but I actually think that the 0.3 looks the best. And we'll also take a look to see how it will affect just the top surface in general. So of course we'll print these out and then we'll start comparing. Okay, so let's apply this setting to an actual print. So right now I have this uh, vase here, and from if you're not familiar with vase mode, uh, this basically will print its bottom and then we'll give a single wall all the way around until it gets to the top, but ignore the top. So we're going to, um, in order to turn that on, uh, go into the Others tab, and you're just going to scroll down until you get to the spiral vase. And we'll slice this. So again, what will end up happening is this will start at the bottom and then it will just go around the entire perimeter until it goes to the next layer and does the same thing. All right, so looking at this model, we are looking at roughly, we'll round up 29 grams uh, and we'll take approximately an hour and 45 minutes of uh, print time uh, or the model print time. And from here, usually this tends to be a pretty light uh, item um, but we're going to apply some of these settings. So we'll print out this one. But if, again, if we go to quality settings and we're looking at our default layer. So it's about a 0.42 millimeter layer going around. Um, we're going to switch over to the other model. So for simplicity's sake, I just effectively turned all of this into one millimeter. So the entire uh, item will print with a one millimeter perimeter and you'll see that it almost triples the amount of filament used. So we have a heavier model uh, and we should have a thicker model. So we'll print this and then we'll take a look at it. All right, let's have a look at these vase prints. So starting with our lighter print. So over after 29 grams. Obviously it's light. And this one at about 66 grams. So double. So effectively we have a more substantial print and you can definitely feel the difference.
questions, comments, concerns, or any kind of contributions, please leave them down below. And like always, thanks for watching.